Right now, uh, another case we want to take a look at, fascinating case. Uh, you know, let's say you, you just got out of prison, you're in prison for fraud. You pick up the phone, your daughter's going to Sarah Lawrence. Hey, honey, uh, I got no place to go. I got no place to live. Can I come hang out and bunk with you and your co-ed roomies? Sure, Dad. Uh, that's kind of the way it all started. Convicted sexual predator Larry Ray sentenced today for abusing uh, a group of Sarah Lawrence College students, his daughter's friends. It was a cult that lasted nearly a decade. He was convicted in federal court on charges including racketeering, which we've been talking about today, conspiracy, extortion, sex trafficking, all kinds of stuff. Uh, right now I have with me long crime reporter Adam Klausfeld. Uh, Adam, you've been following this case for a while. I'm, I'm going to let you uh, lay out the lead here. What happened in court? What was this guy sentenced to? Larry Ray was sentenced to 60 years imprisonment. He is 63 years old, so that is effectively a life sentence for him. And it was for crimes that, in the judge's description, were evil, that were acts of unspeakable cruelty. And we heard about those acts and saw them throughout the trial in reams of videos, uh, audio evidence. Uh, three of his victims spoke two in person, one through a representative, and they described just some of the horrific abuse that they lived through, whether one of them, Daniel Levin, uh, had his testicles squeezed with a garret. Uh, another one was uh, punched in the stomach with a sledgehammer, a same victim, Daniel Levin, and Larry Ray used a set of pliers to pull his tongue. Another victim who didn't appear in court because she wanted to move on with her life was Larry Ray's sex trafficking victim, Claudia Drury, saying that she'd spent years in a nearly catatonic state, that she was sex trafficked by Larry Ray to the tune of $2.5 million and spent years essentially in his thrall and delivering very moving statements through her representative. Uh, I mentioned Daniel Levin earlier. He teared up frequently during his remarks, detailing what he lived through. Uh, folks might be aware of him through a memoir that he wrote about his time in what has often been called Larry Ray's sex cult. Uh, the book was called Slotum Woods Nine, named after the communal dorm where he met and eventually exploited his daughter's friends and roommates. Uh, there was Santos Rosario, one of three siblings who Larry Ray victimized. And he was, like, like his two sisters, all three attempted suicide. He talked about his feelings of being, feeling valueless, feeling worthless, and how Larry Ray cultivated that to make him feel in his debt and to make him eventually turn over hundreds of thousands of dollars to Larry Ray, money that he got through his mother. You know, so there, I'm sorry, let me ask you this, Adam, uh, because you know, we saw the picture, uh, producer Elizabeth, can we see the picture of Larry Ray there again? Um, you know, there's no greater evidence of the power of persuasion and manipulation than when you look at this guy, I mean, you know, yeah, okay. Is this guy going to convince in a normal world, uh, you know, co-eds to have group sex with him? And this guy is a master manipulator. And I know that you saw evidence. We saw some of the video uh, running here as you were uh, making your report uh, that this guy was so egotistical that he was taking these videos. These weren't taken by victims. They were taken by the defendant and probably because he thought they would help him someday. Tell me how that played out. Well, the reason why Larry Ray, in his own mind, may have thought that these horrific videos would have helped him is because most of them are videos of quote-unquote confessions. He would have the victims confess to ridiculous things, uh, fantastical accounts of them trying to poison him, collude with his enemies. Um, as a matter of fact, Larry Ray himself spoke at the sentencing hearing and the only victim he appeared to refer to was the one that he thought uh, was the true victim, Larry Ray. Uh, absolutely no empathy for the victims, no sense of remorse. And I think that contributed to the fact that the judge ultimately put him away what, for what's effectively a life sentence. 
So that is just one feature of the evidence of this case. It was chronicled by him, uh, sometimes to coerce the victims. Once you have these videos of these quote-unquote confessions, uh, they are confessing to crimes. Uh, in in their view, that they think that Larry Ray can go to the authorities and have them on tape saying, yes, we plotted against Larry Ray doing these things. And that's how he got these kids in his thrall, one of the many ways. Uh, other ways, he would talk about his elaborate backstory. He used to be connected to pretty powerful people. There are pictures of him with uh, former Russian president Mikhail Gorbachev. There are pictures of him with former New York City mayor Rudy Giuliani and former NYPD chief Bernie Carrick. Uh, and he would use these associations to create this illusion of a very powerful man, not an ex-con who just got out of prison, uh, but as a man with influence and as a man who could have been persecuted by shadowy powers that be. And that was that kind of image that he pushed for himself, for his victims, to keep them under his thrall. This guy goes from couch surfing on his daughter's dorm to, to creating this little uh, fiefdom of his own. Now, you see this guy in court. You mentioned what he said, that he didn't seem to have any uh, sympathy for anybody but himself. But what was his demeanor like? Has uh, spending some time in the can, getting ready for his, really, life sentence, as you suggest, uh, softened him at all? Did he seem arrogant? What was he like? So he just was utterly expressionless when the victims were speaking. He was seated behind them, looked directly at them. Uh, he did not appear to be moved in any way by anything that he was saying. The one time that he betrayed any emotion was talking about deaths in his own family while he was incarcerated. So it goes to what I was saying. Again, the only victim that Larry Ray sees here is Larry Ray, even though the world can see all of this evidence of really, and, and this was, again, a quote from the judge, unspeakable uh, abuse, and much of it captured on tape. I have to assume he's going to be uh, looking around for appellate attorneys. Uh, anything you're aware of from the trial that may give him a foothold on an appeal? Well, we'll see what happens, but, uh, you know, there ha the defense attorneys haven't really signaled uh, any plans of attack, but like you noted a little bit earlier, there is an, just there are just scores of documents, videos, audio tapes, just mountains of evidence, all under Larry Ray's own So it is very safe to say that he has a very hard road uh, and maybe insurmountable road to hoe. Wow. So Adam Klausfeld, the managing editor of LawandCrime.com. If you haven't read Adam's stuff, go to LawandCrime.com, check it out. Uh, he and his colleagues there do fabulous work every day. And Adam, I appreciate you joining today to give us the update on this, uh, this guy. Thank you for having me. You bet.